stand at the crossroads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way lies and walk in it and find rest for your souls. She came into office at a time when people started questioning even the relevance of the presidency. One of the challenges that we've had during her tenure was simply the whole fiasco with regard to the Pol Police Service Commission and the merit list and the fact that it was not transferred to the parliament in accordance with the law. That threw a bit of a shadow on her performance. The office of the president is not part of the government. She's the head of state, but she's not the head of government. That, of course, is the prime minister. So she does not summon ministers to speak to them or not. You know, it's not in the portfolio to do that. She became more of an administrator with all the administrative duties that go with the office of president. But she spent her five years and she was prim and proper as she was as a judge of the High Court and the Court of Appeal and as a prosecutor and she completed her tenure. Being the first female president um, took center stage uh, when she was inaugurated. Um, she made a critical speech and presentation at her inauguration and she called upon us to know that we are part and parcel of a country, we are part and parcel of a country that we have to work to build and um, we have our, our responsibilities and she was reminding the citizenry of their responsibilities and not being dependent purely and solely on the state and other institutions but rather citizens must take responsibility for themselves to some extent. Paula May was born um, in 1958 um, and grew up all her life in the West. She went to school at um, Tranquility Primary and she grew up with her mom and she had a brother, but, but he died. So she's really now an only child and she and her mom live together and they live together all the years. That's why she's always very careful of her mom and taking care of her and not to do things that would um, discombobulate her life because now her mother is in her 90s and you know older folks you can't just drag them off to go live here and go live there you know so she lives with her mom and in fact that was one of the reasons for President Weeks never moving into the president's house now in 2018 when she became the president the house was still under renovations so it took a couple of years, but when it opened, it reopened, um, people were surprised that you, you're not going to move into the president's house. But her mother at 90, it would have been difficult. A lot of people don't understand, again, that the special branch and the security are who dictate how many cars and how many officers and whatnot. It's not something that the president can say, well, today I feel into drive my car and I go in for myself. No, cannot happen. There, there is a lot of, um, you know, people saying, and I've, I've heard it myself, well, why, why are they flying around with siren and pelting people off the road, who she feels she is? It's not who she feels she is, it's the office. You are now the president, the head of state, and certain security issues are not yours to decide. You know, the woman's touch is always very different from the male approach, and we need, it, we need that. And I think it's also a good example for girls in schools that, you know, your, your direction, your, your, your academic direction could take you anywhere. It, it doesn't have to, to be confined to specific roles that have been traditionally associated with women. So I think it's a good thing. And, and I, have no, I have absolutely no problem with a woman running the country. Why not? My message for the women of Trinidad and Tobago would be to have a realistic assessment of what skills and competencies you possess, and then after that, let there be no limit to what you can do. <laughs>